today's webinar um, topic on MSMEs is to review the outcomes and the insights from the recently published UPU research uh, study, Postal Network as Enablers of MSME Payment Digitization, which has been sponsored by Visa and uh, the Gates Foundation and has been conducted by Amaranti Consulting. We will also have the pleasure of interventions uh, from a number of our distinguished guests today to help us put in perspective the important role of MSMEs play in our life, in our business, in our economies. Um, first, uh, just to go through the agenda, we will hear from the UPU uh, economist, Dr. Jose um, Anson, on why MSME matters. And this will be followed by Mrs. Sahana's uh, Arun intervention, partner and managing director of Amaranti Consulting. Uh, she will inform us on the key messages and findings from the conducted research. Then we will hear from uh, Mrs. Louise uh, Holden, Global Head of Partnerships, uh, Government Solutions at Visa, um, on the role of the private sector in digitizing MSMEs. And we will also have the MSME uh, Postal Network member perspective from Mr. Constantine Cassese, Director of Electronic and Financial Agency at Tanzania Post. Um, at the end of the session, after the interventions, we will hold a short panel discussion with our guests, and then we will open up the floor uh, for questions. Um, let me just take a few seconds to share the definition of MSMEs, the International Labor Organization, International Finance Corporation, and the Eurostat Structural Business Statistics identify the commonly used definition for microenterprises as that the one that employs from one to 10 employees. Medium-sized enterprises employs 50 to 250 employees. And uh, from the IFC um, sample, 83% of the MSMEs were micro-entrepreneurs, um, enterprises, evidencing the importance of um, the very small business uh, worldwide. With that, let me hand over the floor to Dr. Anson. Dr. Anson, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everybody, wherever you are connecting with us in the world. Uh, I will explain in this presentation uh, the role of MSME, so why they, they matter so much. Um, next slide, please. One must recognize the key role that MSMEs are playing in today's economies. They represent globally 90% of businesses worldwide, 70% of employment, uh, and contribute about 50% of uh, GDP every year. Uh, they play also a very important role in terms of taxation, uh, since uh, they represent uh, 14 trillion in global tax contribution. And uh, uh, most important, they are present in every community and sector and form the backbone of our economies. Next slide, please. So they are very powerful in terms of job creation. They have a huge uh, impact on employment. Uh, seven out of 10 new formal jobs uh, in emerging economies. 72% uh, of private sector employment across 77 economies. 16.3 permanent jobs can be created for each uh, million dollar invested in MSMEs. Uh, they also represent 66% of private sector employment in advanced economies. And very often they are also key for the primary source of first time employment opportunities. So huge role in terms of employment impact. Next slide, please. In high-income economies, they generate over 55% of the GDP. Uh, they represent 45% of manufacturing value added, and they are present across key sectors like accommodation and food services, construction, professional services, local trade, specialty manufacturing, but also, and it is particularly important for us in the postal and logistics world, e-commerce, as you can see on the chart here about global Amazon Prime Day sales by small and medium-sized businesses, they are selling more and more across global e-commerce platforms. And uh, uh, these platforms are becoming increasingly important for them to commercialize a product. Next slide, please. And what is also important is that uh, uh, their impact on growth is quite inclusive because they are primary source for rural employment. They are also a key driver of women's economic participation uh, in many countries. They are also a major platform for youth employment uh, to give this first opportunity of employment. Uh, 
They are absolutely essential in the local economic circulation. And uh, uh, as we've seen also uh, with COVID-19, they are critical for building economic resilience uh, during, uh, during crisis. Next slide, please. They are also very uh, dynamic from a market perspective with a great capacity to innovate and adapt. Uh, they have actually higher product innovation rate than in many large firms. They are quite fast to adapt to market changes. Uh, they are quite responsive from a local market perspective. Uh, they are the prime source of creating niche markets. And they are also contributing to the diversification of uh, supply chains. Next slide, please. Um, one must understand that uh, today there is a 40% productivity gap between MSMEs and large, large firms. And if we can tackle this productivity gap, uh, we could benefit from a 5 to 10% GDP gain potential uh, by improving this MSME's productivity. But to achieve this result, we need to fix uh, the, the challenge that I mean, to find a solution to the challenge of the financing gap that we find in developing countries. There is currently a 5.2 trillion financing gap for MSMEs in developing countries. Um, there are also great opportunities if we can help these MSMEs in their digital transformation uh, so that they can, uh, they, they can uh, adapt their, their business and operational model and uh, uh, and remain competitive in the in the digital age and uh, last but not least uh, uh, there are great untapped export market opportunities for msmes it's never easy for a company to export uh, uh, historically this has been uh, this has been the 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 reserve of uh, large companies uh, that uh, that can risk to, to export to the rest of the world but if we can support MSME's entry in export market, uh, there is a real untapped potential, as we have already seen in the past uh, through uh, programs like, like uh, Easy Export uh, in the in the through the postal channels. Next slide, please. So there are key barriers that must be overcome for MSMEs to 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 develop. Uh, we have already uh, spoken about this uh, limited access to financing options. There are also, in many countries, complex and burdensome regulatory environment that they need to overcome. Uh, then there is this lack of market access and global connection, for instance, if uh, uh, we want to include them uh, uh, in the, the global trading system. They are sometimes also slow to adopt emerging technologies. Um, we can think of uh, AI, for instance, recently. And of course, they have to solve uh, gaps in skills development and training so, because uh, without upscaling their staff, it's going to be difficult for them to, 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 to develop uh, uh, a new business or operational model. And uh, what is a postal service opportunity here? Basically, the postal service opportunity is to help break these development barriers for MSMEs. And why postal services could help break these development barriers for MSMEs? Because first, the postal network is a very extended uh, infrastructure all over the world with more than 650,000 post offices worldwide, uh, uh, of, who, of which most of them are in rural communities. Uh, they cover 97% uh, of uh, rural communities in, throughout the world. And those institutions in many countries are trusted locally, and they have already some built-in infrastructure that can be leveraged uh, for a, a new uh, program supporting MSMEs. And uh, there is also a good record uh, um, from past uh, experiences in terms of supporting uh, MSMEs' access to market, particularly to export market. Uh, in Brazil, uh, uh, personally, as an economist, I was studying the impact of a number of programs supporting access to export market for MSMEs through the postal channel. And uh, it was really an impressive uh, uh, contribution to the, the, the diversification of the number of Brazilian companies um, uh, exporting abroad. Uh, thanks to this program, there were almost 10,000 new exporters, 7,600. 126 exactly, new exporters uh, that were uh, mostly MSMEs and first-time exporters. 
And the, the, the fact that those uh, trade facilitation program, uh, they were targeting MSMEs, uh, dramatically reduced entry cost for them by 40 to 50%. So the entry cost uh, to, to enter the export market is critical and, and a well-targeted program can help uh, these, uh, these uh, entry through to the postal channel. And uh, on top of it, we can uh, combine uh, uh, financial inclusion with state facilitation and also formalization of a number of businesses. So moving them from the informal sector to the formal sector so all these uh, combined together is way more powerful than, than when you try to keep this financial inclusion or trust facilitation or formalization of businesses in isolation. The more you connect uh, uh, the different uh, uh, development areas, uh, the greater the sy synergies uh, that you can, you can get uh, through these different programs. Next slide, please. So if there is a call to action in terms of strategic priorities, uh, I would say that for MSMEs, it's absolutely clear that the financial uh, inclusion is promoted. Uh, it's absolutely clear uh, to drive their digital transformation uh, to help them achieve greater efficiency. It's absolutely essential to expand market access to foster growth. Uh, it's also very important to invest in their capacity building and skill development. And it's absolutely essential to leverage this ex existing infrastructure like the postal network to, to allow them to access to scalable solutions. Next slide, please. And finally, there are two key areas for progress. Uh, one is partnerships, and we're going to talk into more details in the following presentation. And the other is regulatory frameworks. So it's very important to try to design uh, in this data-driven world, uh, and particularly in the postal network where we have plenty of data about everything going on. It's particularly important to try to design data-driven partnerships that support this MSME's development through the postal network. Uh, because like this, uh, with this design of data-driven partnership, we can actually much better measure the actual impacts of these different partnership models uh, so that we learn and adjust, uh, if needed, uh, the, the different ways of partner, partner, partnering uh, in, in support of this MSME's development. And uh, of course, it's also, also important to have a supportive regulatory framework uh, and to transform it if necessary, so that postal services are allowed to boost uh, MSME's development. And it's also important, uh, as we measure the actual impact of the different partnership model, it's also important quantitatively, quantitatively to evaluate the actual impact of the different regulatory frameworks. And here again, in the postal uh, networks, we are well equipped because, uh, again, I repeat, uh, we have uh, tons of data, big data on, on anything that is happening through this uh, network, and we can we can test all sorts of uh, frameworks and see which one seems to be more supportive of MSME development. And if this was not enough in terms of data um, uh, wealth that we have here, if we combine this with the most recent development in artificial intelligence, and we have already started to do so at UPU, we could even have an AI-driven optimization of these partnerships and regulatory design uh, so that we can simulate uh, many, many different uh, scenarios and options to support uh, uh, MSMEs in the best possible manner. But now um, I would like to give back the floor to the rest of panelists so that they can present uh, the result of their fascinating research on, on MSMEs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jose. This has been very interesting uh, insights. Um, next, we have um, Amaranti Consulting um, presentation. Amaranti Consulting has been commissioned by UPU to conduct a deep dive into the world of MSMEs globally and with a particular focus on how the postal networks and partnerships can play a critical role in digitizing MSMEs payments in support of the National Financial Inclusion Goals. Um, the research study has been published and it's already um, available on the UPU uh, website. Um, and uh, with that, uh, Mrs. Kumar, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ihab. Um, 
Thank you very much also, Dr. Dohe, for that uh, excellent presentation. And I think I will start by just recalling some of the key statistics that you shared and that go towards the case for digitizing MSMEs, right? We, we heard from you that approximately 90% of all businesses are accounted for by informal MSMEs or, you know, in general, in emerging markets, you have a mix of formal, informal, informal is obviously the, the bigger part of it, but they do contribute to 70% of the total employment and 50% of GDP worldwide. Those are staggering figures. You also shared a financing gap of $5.2 trillion, which means that there is this demand and need for financing and that we're not able to cover that gap as an industry. How do the posts figure in this? The posts, according to UPU Global Panama Report, 90% of them are already offering financial services, right? And in emerging markets, about 35% of posts offer digital payment solutions already. And with the scale and the presence that posts have, it's an obvious um, vehicle to think of when we think of digitizing for MSMEs. And there is a growing demand for digital access. We see in all of these markets, you know, phone penetration is high. People are using digital channels and tools more and more. And so there are opportunities to drive this access to new markets, uh, streamline the friction around payments and transactions, and also streamline working capital um, provision. Next slide, please, Ihab. Um, so we wanted to bring forward some challenges in the emerging markets when it comes to payment digitization. Um, we have ecosystem challenges. Dr. Jose, you talked upon some of them, regulatory barriers, infrastructure, of course, that is often a challenge. And uh, nobody really is taking the time to see how they can tailor products and service to the MSMEs. Um, there is also lack of consumer protection rules. And generally, we see that cash, you know, is very well used still. And so there is an underdeveloped demand, um, demand side dynamics. Let's go to the demand as from an ecosystem perspective. Let's look at merchant and, and the clients and customer, right? Um, and we often know that it's the end customer that also influences the choices that merchants, you know, ask for, the type of facilities or, or instruments or tools they ask for. But coming to a merchant and saying that, you know, we want to digitize your payments usually means a lengthy process of KYC, tax implications. Um, very often we hear hidden costs as, as a fear. Um, and there are also very fragmented digitization value chains in these markets, right? There's, you know, very often many possibilities, not, you know, not one that's taking a big center stage. And it usually requires the MSME owner to have some initial investments into being able to access these digital payments and point of sales. Um, there is also a lot of, um, you know, opacity in how will complaints be handled if they need support, if something goes wrong, you know, it's digital, there's no human in front of me, next to me, so how do I, you know, work around those, and also concerns on data privacy. And of course, there's a lower perceived value of this payment digitization because Cash is always readily available and also, you know, using a digital channel for transaction financial purposes is still not very uh, well versed. And we also often talk about lack of digital literacy as well. And when we come to the end customer, we hear some of the same things of hesitation to bear, you know, transaction fees. Um, they don't have one offering of digital channels. Nowadays, we have many and, you know, they're not very sure which one to use. Um, there is low access to formal financial services. There's preference of cash. Uh, user experience is, you know, slow. And overall, digital and financial literacy, numeracy skills can also be quite slow. So, you know, this fragmented experience um, doesn't make it easy. And an ecosystem that is not very robust doesn't make it easy um, to, to tackle, right? Next slide, Pete. Easy hub. Um, so we wanted to then look at the posts, you know, what can the posts do faced with all these, you know, challenges? Um, if we look at the strengths and, you know, we, we, we all in the sector know this, but the, the posts are really experienced in inclusive financial services. We said 90% of them are already offering some financial service or the other, and there is a growing digitization trend 
there is a deep wide presence in rural areas, of course in urban areas, and the post usually has a very strong brand presence within its communities. And there is, you know, oftentimes affinity from childhood days. People are saying, you know, we we really like our post. I haven't been there for a while, maybe, but I really like my post. Um, extensive partnerships. Posts have been known to make partnerships with governments, with other private sector parties. And some of them have even established postal banks to improve savings and service offerings. Um, they offer liquidity for cash in, cash out in many mobile money driven markets. Um, there is a strong intention. We hear e-commerce uh, to service MSMEs via e-commerce. And of course, even if it's not digitized, there is a historical um, you know, data that they can use. And like you said, Dr. Jose, there are a number of opportunities to work with government, to work with policy and regulations, given their position in a market and their mandate for public service, you know, they can be used to increase awareness and people are getting more digitally aware. Um, they have the opportunity to address rural gaps because they have a presence physically in, you know, country over. Um, and they're also able to, um, you know, um, communicate in local languages, which is also very, very strong, right? Um, but when we look at some of the weaknesses, we, we do see that there is no uh, tailored approach per segment of customers. So there is a mass market approach, and this doesn't usually work to onboard a informal customer. Um, they focus more on registered businesses. So again, difficult to access informal, smaller businesses. And there is a lot of skill gap, skill gap in digitization, skill gap among you know frontline staff. Um, how do you treat a customer? How do you message? Uh, how do you interact with the customer? What are we looking for? How do we sell? How do we stay competitive? Um, and again, in the skills gaps, there's a high dependency of technology partners, right? And oftentimes, it's the partner that is in control of the design of the product and delivery. Um, and we are advocating for the post to take some of that. And I wouldn't go too much into the threats, but obviously, you know, data protection regulations, the risk of fraud when we talk about digitization, you know, especially, and also regulatory regimes, um, you know, often reduce the appetite of posts to go into um, this kind of innovation full-fledged. Next slide, please, Ehab. Um, We also wanted to look a little bit at traditional offerings of posts uh, versus innovations that are being adopted. So obviously across, you know, products, delivery channels, and, and, and the target market, the pan-national presence of the post is, you know, un undeniable. And traditional projects such as uh, savings, remittances, uh, government to person uh, or person to government transactions, you know, have happened historically, are happening even today, physically in cash. Of course, a huge network um, in, in terms of branch presence um, and also, you know, a strong guidance from government and strong mandate to serve the general population, right? And ever since COVID and ever since the market is being uh, more and more digital and more and more competitive, we see there are some innovations that are being taken in terms of, uh, you know, product, expand products um, in a digital format. So some things like utility payments. And we know many countries in COVID also allowed using the post as um, a delivery channel to get closer to the customer be that for information or for uh, for a transaction. Delivery channels are being digitized um, and the post is a great uh, example for tech and touch. So high touch with the human touch, but also getting tech and being able to offer those kind of digital uh, delivery channels. And then of course, the target continues to be general, um, but are being pushed really to look into specific segments um, because of, um, you know, focus areas like these, MSMEs, uh, women, et cetera, et cetera. And so we see that the posts are being pushed and they're also ramping, they're motivated themselves. Um, and there's really a concerted effort to leverage digital technologies, uh, technologies like payments, and to really see how the posts can engage for enhanced uh, engagement with customer, but also for delivery and, and payment services. Next slide, please, Ehab. Um, I'd like to focus a bit on the study that, that Ehab mentioned. So in behind, you know, you take this concept, 
context of challenges, challenges we saw at a country level for merchants, for the end customer. We look at where the posts are heading. And what we really wanted to do was to see what kind of strategic role can the post uh, take to enable digital payment services for these MSMEs. So the first step we did was to synthesize, you know, right now, what is the state? And much of what I've just gone through talks about challenges, you know, innovative solutions. What can really facilitate this payment digitization for small and medium enterprises? through the posts. We identified specific cases where the posts have successfully implemented financial services that are really targeting these small merchants. We then assessed existing gaps and limitations of the postal networks that were offering these uh, payment solutions, but also of the market in general as well. And you know what would be needed to meet these gaps. And so finally, we recommend in the report the best strategies and pathways for postal networks to really enable small merchants to adopt digital payments and integrate it into their existing business and their day-to-day -day effectively, both for posts and also for uh, the merchants in question. Next slide, please, Ihab. Thank you. So putting together some key study learnings, like, you know, the, the study really reveals the potential that posts have to really significantly enhance MSME access of digital payments. And this is through strategic business models and partnerships. The posts have trust of the population and they have access. And so this is, um, we, we can't neglect this fact, right? It is easier for them to be present in the day-to-day -day of their communities. They bridge gaps. Posts can address digital payment gaps and they can also address some of these challenges of lack of infrastructure, KYC processes, et cetera, because they're so present and because they're able to be a delivery channel um, for this population. Um, partnerships, Dr. Jose, you mentioned partnerships, right? So partnerships between postal operators and financial service providers are essential for success. Um, and the post could leverage FSP platforms and avoid reinventing the wheel and you know building new technology from scratch. Um, and this allows for a quicker time to market. And of course, tailored solutions. We have to understand the local market, understand the regulatory environments, and understand what the MSME customer needs, which post being on the ground can do very well. In partnership, it can only be enhanced with how to address this population digitally. Um, we also found that flexibility is very important in the different types of payment acceptance that are offered, uh, different types of loan products. Customers today want flexibility. They want many options. So it's important and digitization partnerships can help bring in that flexibility. We talked a lot about skill gaps for the posts. So capacity building is a key element. Postal staff need to have uh, skill training, these are critical to ensure that the post can manage these new services, integrate them, understand them, and offer them effectively. Interoperability, it's not something that the post can solve, but it is interoperability in payments is really important from an infrastructure perspective so that it can offer a broader reach for MSME services. It also improves governance, risk management. It allows for more acceptance points, et cetera. And finally, sustainability. We urge posts to develop comprehensive business cases, financial projections that is, you know, backed by market research, by understanding. They know their market well. Being a digital layer brings different data sites, different insights, and all this will guide decisions and help posts to ensure a long-term solution when getting into these kind of business models with their partners. Next slide, please, we have. Thank you. So this is, I think, the most critical uh, part of the report um, that sheds light on three primary business models uh, where the post can actually take a position to address payment digitization and to serve MSMEs more effectively. Um, I'll go through the three models, but these are not mutually exclusive. A post can decide to do part of each, um, and they're not even phased. You can start 
you know, in, in, in any which model, depending on the market context. Model one talks about POST as financial service agents. Um, so in this model, POST act as agents for financial service providers or for the government, and they offer products such as cash and cash out facilities, uh, payments, insurance, savings, um, you know, filling up credit forms, for example. So a real agent for between the FSP and the end customer. And we have here an example of India Post that has successfully provided financial services to rural customers reaching 15 million people through their network. Model two talks about Post as digital payment acceptor. So the, here the Post is taking a driver's seat and actually offering the digitization um, payment rail. And um, here we see that, um, you know, they can allow acceptance to various digital channels. It could be a POS machine, it could be a QR code, it could be an e-wallet, et cetera. And we have the example of Qatar Post partnership with QPay, uh, where they facilitate cashless payments on delivery. So they're actually having a point of sale, the delivery point. And then you have model three, where posts can actually be facilitators for MSME payments, but also delivery services. And here we're talking about POST really integrating their logistic cap capabilities um, with payment solutions so that they can support the supply chain journey of the MSP, MSME. Um, here we have an example of Thailand POST Mart, um, which helps farmers, smallhold farmers, sell and de deliver products both domestically and internationally. We wanted to give these examples so that it concretizes the model where in this case, in model three, you're actually seeing how the post comes in to accept a payment, but also is helping the MSME with delivery. Um, so in the next slide, we talk about key recommendations and the way forward. Um, and we have two sets, recommendation for posts and recommendations for policymakers. As a post, um, we strongly advise to appoint an accountable leader as a business owner. When you start a new innovative project like this, uh, you need to have somebody that's driving this that can think through these innovative channels, talk to these partners, um, et cetera, et cetera. It will also help you with point two, which is develop concrete business plans and financial projections, and which are actually backed by customer-centric research. Um, so not just talking to partners or seeing what's possible in the market, but really hearing from your clients, from postal clients, non-postal clients to understand what really does the customer need and then build the business plan on top of that. Um, use your partnerships to address skill gaps and regulatory environment requirements. So partnerships, not only for the tech and not only for one part of the um, delivery or product, but also to see how partnerships can be more wholesome to uh, train, um, to capacity build and work together. And obviously also to understand and work through some of the regulatory requirements. Make customer the king or the queen. This comes back to being customer centric. So really understand um, you know, what you're offering the customer and how do you address and how do you also collect the needed data, the needed transaction information as you go along. Empower postal staff capacity building programs, um, invest in communication branding. Although you're a trusted brand and posts are very well perceived in their markets, being digital asks for a uplift, asks for a slight difference and asks for a redynamization. So looking at how you can um, take a brand which is already very strong and give it that push um, to put it really in front of that innovation um, that posts are proposing. Be lean and agile, very, very easily said. But again, when you take on a digital project and innovation, um, it's also important to be able to change course as we go along. And in that sense, partnership deals can be um, you know, curated to be flexible. Um, we could have cycles of product development and piloting that allows the post to get it right um, before going full fetch to market. Recommendations for policymakers. Advocate for postal networks to be made part of national digital policies and your financial inclusion agendas. Posts can really play a pivotal role in um, pushing the national agenda forward for financial inclusion. So a place for them to do that would be great and positioning them for that and giving them the voice. 
both the postal capacities to offer these payment digitization. Again, we can think of capacity building, training, uh, work sessions, et cetera, to foster that capacity. Strength and interoperability, we talked about scale, and if there are no national rails for interoperability, it will be very difficult for postal networks to offer the same. Uh, facilitate partnership building. As uh, policymakers, as regulators, um, you can have that role in bringing partners together and thinking through who can work together for the MSMEs. And of course, foster regional collaboration. We heard from Dr. Jose about trade, about you know how things are going also to foster export, import, and in that case, having regional lens and collaboration can go a long way um, you know, to, to accommodate the differences, but also serve better the MSMEs. I think with that, we have, we have come to the end of this session. Um, thank you again for listening, and I do urge you to look at the report. We have many countries covered, about 29, and also some in-country work through focus groups, KIIs, mystery shopping, so wealth of information in there. Um, and we thank you, PU, for this collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Sahana. This is a very interesting um, research. And as you said, uh, there is a lot more information. So please uh, get your copy of the report. It's available on the on-site, um, on, the, on the site of, of UPU. Um, and there is a lot of additional information. Um, next, <laughs> we, next, we have um, Visa. Um, uh, will provide a presentation on the critical role of the private sector in digitizing MSMEs. Visa is a, an important partner of UPU and has sponsored a number of important previous UPU financial inclusion programs and research studies, initiative including today's uh, research topic. Um, Visa as a global technology and digital financial services leader has a lot to offer from a private public partnership uh, perspective to enhance the financial and digital inclusion. Um, in support of um, sustainable economic and social development for the MSMEs globally, and particularly for the uh, post postal MSMEs. We look forward to continuous collaboration with Visa in the future. Uh, with that, um, let me hand over to Mrs. Holden. Uh, Mrs. Holden, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ihab. Um, thanks very much for the invitation to be part of your day. Um, it's a real honour to um, to join Jose, Sahana and Constantine um, on the panel from UPU, Amarante and Tanzania Post. So, so thank you. Um, I've been in digital payments for over 30 years now. Uh, um, and I currently head um, global partnerships for Visa Government Solutions. Um, I mean, in that role, I build partnerships um, uh, across public and private sector um, to help governments, private sector, DFIs, humanitarian organizations, and post offices uh, build better digital solutions and services. Um, I mean, at Visa Government Solutions, our mission is helping governments and civil society to deploy digital payment technology that uplifts everyone everywhere. Um, and as you've heard from the two previous um, presenters, a big part of that everyone is MSMEs. Um, so it's a real privilege and honor to speak to you all today on this. Um, if we can move forward onto the next slide, please, Zihab. Um, I have to leave this slide on this screen. So uh, as long as it takes to impress on your subconscious, it's the disclaimer. So we can move probably swiftly on. Thank you. Um, so in today's section, uh, session, I was going to cover four points. Um, I was going to linger on the importance of MSMEs to economies. But Jose and Sahana have done such a great job. I don't think I really need to linger as long as I'd intended. Um, but I'm going to share with you some of our experience of the, the value and the uplift um, that MSMEs get from digitization as well as some of the challenges that they face. And Sahana's already uh, pulled a few of those out for you today. Uh, they'll spend a little bit of time on, um, on the ideas about how the private sector, but in partnership with public sector and post offices, can help address those barriers. And then I, um, I leave with uh, four recommendations, a bit like Sahana, four recommendations um, about uh, moving forward. So if we could move on to the next slide, please. Um, so... Without a doubt, small businesses and in particular MSMEs are the backbone of the global economy. Um, so sure, ensuring that they can participate, um, but importantly, equally benefit from the digital financial economy is truly a win-win for everybody. If you can move us on. 
So I think we've already established that they are really good at creating a significant amount of jobs. Um, but innovation is what I wanted to linger on. Um, they're also great at driving innovation. They're more nimble and they operate at speed. Um, and you just got to remember that some of the world's largest organizations today started as MSMEs. I mean, Airbnb was once an MSME. Um, so these really are the kind of found the founding and the foundational layer of economies. Um, I mean, not only are they this essential part um, of the national economy, but they're also a really essential part of the local economy and community um, because spend is invested locally and they do contribute to local tax collection. Um, so we believe, um, and I think um, many of the listeners on the on the webinar today, we believe that with the right digital tools, uh, digital payment capabilities and training, uh, um, they can have an even greater impact on both their businesses, in their communities and in their economies. Um, so if we could move on, please, Ehab, thank you. Um, just going to spend five points on um, how digitalization can benefit MSMEs. Um, first one, entry into the formal financial system. I mean, opening accounts for um, digital payments is a gateway to financial inclusion. Uh, the trend, uh, as I think um, Jose mentioned, the trend grew during COVID, the pandemic, um, as many SM MSMEs opened accounts to access government emergency assistance. But we do now see many development finance organisations, governments and other organisations providing mixes of grant, debt and guarantee for MSMEs to give them the support and build resilience. This can be a catalyst for financial inclusion, beginning that MSME's journey to greater financial stability. Um, enhanced access to finance. I mean, digital payments generate data um, and that is, this can establish creditworthiness for businesses without traditional assets. By creating alternative forms of collateral, such as, uh, such as movable assets um, and uh, product line, lenders can offer loans which are much more easy um, to access and can be more affordable, especially to marginalised groups. And this reduces those historical barriers to credit that um, I think Sahara was, ta was talking about previously. Efficient, low cost and secure payments. Um, now, you, this is probably not surprising from somebody from Visa, but digital transactions do simplify and speed up payments, um, improving cash flow. Uh, this also over time needs to reduce operating cash handling costs um, and significantly increases the security um, for that MSME owner. And particularly for female entrepreneurs, remote payments can offer a more comfortable way to interact with suppliers um, or clients. Improved business operations. Um, digitalization streamlines payments for suppliers, for wages, taxes and compliance. And this all helps business efficiency. Um, MSMEs can also access um, enhanced services available from other organizations looking to serve the MSME segment. And it can help boost the economic resilience of the small business owner. Uh, digital payments also help MSMEs attract more customers. Um, they can see increased sales. Um, but also they can receive remittances more easily. And this is, I think, one of the key opportunities um, for post offices to support remittances for um, MSNEs. The additional income from MSNE is vital. Um, it can support reinvestment um, and it empowers entrepreneurs, especially those from excluded groups, um, and it can give them greater financial agency. So those are five benefits, but we do know um, and again, as Sahana, I think, talked about before, that MSMEs as a subset of, MS, of SMEs, they do face some obstacles and challenges to digitize. And um, we worked with the Overseas Development Institute recently um, to uncover some of these challenges. It was extensive global research um, with a particular focus on Colombia and South Africa. Um, we spoke to governments, MSME groups, small business owners themselves. themselves. And I'm gonna share a little bit of what we, um, what, of what we found out. Um, the first point is not all MSMEs can benefit from digitalization. Uh, you know, there are some owners who are traditionally socioeconomically or geographically disadvantaged. They can have trouble accessing the benefits and potentially lack the ID um, and the digital and financial literary skills um, that can help unlock those benefits. This barrier can have a compounding effect um, as it increases their reliance on intermediaries and this can put individuals at higher risk of financial abuse and this is particularly significant for women. Um, whilst we know digitization can reduce many operational costs for MSMEs, the barriers of entry can be high. I mean think about the cost of mobile devices, data plans, 
Um, also how a lack of interoperability can increase the need to maintain multiple payment devices on the counter. Formalization um, and well-designed taxation policies can generate wide-ranging benefits for MSMEs. And in some cases, in many cases, resulting in increased net profits. Um, yet MSMEs do think that digitalization leads to increased visibility, and this can in turn increase tax burdens. And lastly, um, if the digital payment platform doesn't include the appropriate cyber protections and security protocols, it can open up um, to new risks around data protection, cybersecurity and fraud. Um, but overall, the benefits do outweigh the challenges. But when designing solutions, when engaging with MSME segments, it's really important to recognise some of the barriers that they face. So, um, yeah, but if you can move us on. So four key opportunities. Um, for private sector in partnership um, to empower MSME digitization. There's a collective responsibility, and I'll start with this point, a collective responsibility of empowering um, MSMEs through digitization. Active participation and collaboration amongst stakeholders is necessary to drive the transformation. It's not just the responsibility of one sector of society. Um, Visa fundamentally believes in this, and in 2020, we announced the goal to digitize 50 million um, MSMEs by the end of 2023 and we achieved it but we didn't do it alone we did it alongside our private and public sector partners um, and a significant proportion of those came through our collaborations with post offices so four key opportunities for private sector um, to empower and drive and accelerate uh, digitalization for MSMEs first one solutions um, I think Sahana talked about tailored pr products so important um, User-centered design is really important. Solutions do need to be localized and contextualized to reflect the variant connectivity, affordability, digital and financial literacy. Um, many of the solutions that are designed by our innovation teams look to address a broader set of challenges. Um, digital payments are normally included, but so is market access, um, improved workflow management, uh, and other areas like data and ID. So private sector can help with solutions like e-marketplaces to reach new customers, CRM systems, digital marketing tools. And all of these can be enhanced by post office collaborations. Um, just think about bundling together delivery services with digital payment capability or SME acceptance solutions. Second one, funding and support. There is a need for accessible funding to support MSME digital transformation. There's different types of funding available, um, loans, grants, venture capital, and from different providers. Um, private sector F um, um, FSP funding, so financial service providers funding from banks and VC firms, it isn't available to everybody. But we have seen a significant increase um, of funding from development finance organizations and national governments, but they flow those fundings through private sector organizations. Um, through local operational banks. Uh, we're working actually with three DFIs to enable credit lines um, to SMEs to cover both post-climatic disaster um, and to smallholder farmers to manage cash flow um, out of the seasonal crop rotations. All of these are dispersed through card-based solutions. Um, those can focus spend on particular merchant categories, um, but as I think was mentioned before, also has the capability of timely um, uh, data and impact reporting um, to manage the effectiveness of the programs. But the cooperation goes, goes beyond the financial mechanism um, and it includes building capacity, uh, mentoring, technical support, training. Because financial inclusion doesn't just mean account issuance, um, but it means a, a package of support to encourage responsible, um, informed usage and meaningful impact. Private sector can develop mentoring and technical support alongside financial aid. Um, our foundation has invested about 2.2 million um, in recent years in grants and coaching um, globally for particularly for female-led um, MSME owners. So financial literacy, um, yeah, critical um, in sustaining digital initiatives. Um, programs and workshops uh, can be developed aimed at educating MSMEs on digital finance, really vital. Um, better financial management can lead to business growth. And lastly, tripartite collaborations. Um, this has been spoken before by the two previous presenters, but collaboration amongst the stakeholders is vital. Partnership between private sector, public sector, including governments and development finance organizations um, can be really impactful and sustainable. 
I mentioned the program um, that provided credit lines and guarantees to MSMEs to keep the lights on post climatic disaster. Each stakeholder has got a role to play. Uh, the DFI, um, the Development Finance Organization, provides the liquidity to the financial service provider and uh, agrees the triggers for when the climate funding kicks in. Um, the financial service provider, the bank, identifies the, the um, MSMEs in, in need of support and they help on boarding those individuals. Um, the network um, can help provide the rails and the card-based solution and develop the impact dashboards. Each one has a particular role to play, all in partnership. But post offices um, play a really vital role in these collaborations. Um, post offices have got the largest retail footprint globally um, and are crucial public sector partners in reaching remote um, MSMEs. Uh, if you could move us on. So key takeaways, um, last slide, I think second last slide actually. Um, so building off the ODI work uh, and our experience of working with MSMEs, four takeaways for stakeholders and policymakers to consider. Um, and these have been um, referenced, I think, by um, particularly for Sahana previously. So first one, identify where and how to expand access to digital payments for MSMEs. Um, look, we firmly believe um, in the benefits of digitization um, and digital payments for MSMEs, but it's not easy and there are barriers. Um, public sector interventions can be costly um, and there's always competing priorities. So our re recommendation is running full cost benefit analysis um, to enable stakeholders to focus the right funding at the right time to the right group. Strengthening the digital payment ecosystem. It, this doesn't just include solutions, but includes ensuring that MSMEs are supported and the risks mitigated. It includes delivering an inclusive, transparent, supportive regulatory environment, including protecting um, uh, privacy, detecting and managing fraud, facilitating, facilitating responsible data sharing. It also means ensuring that the MSME can access the services they most value, access to finance, access to markets, cross-border options, and building a credit um, history are high, normally high on the lists that we see. Consultation and engagement. This is really important to create um, effective program delivery and to build trust in digital payment initiatives. Look, this group is not um, uh, heterogeneous. They have diverse needs um, and they require a deeper understanding of the sector to develop and scale the solutions appropriate for that group. Private sector does do this pretty well um, and we normally do it for product development and I think this can be a valuable contribution um, into a DFS initiative with a post office. And last point, um, developing champions um, uh, and investing in coordinating institutions is really vital. What we find out from the research um, is that um, MSME digitization is not in national digitization plans. MSME growth is and digitization is but MSME digitization um, is not often in national transformation digitization plans. Um, and we think that's an opportunity to address. Um, identification of champions who work across government is really vital. Developing a leadership and coordination approach, uh, well tailored to the country's institutional context is really key um, to capitalize on the synergies and reduce those frictions that can happen within government. Um, Coordinating leadership is also really critical to encouraging investment from both private and public sector and international finance institutions. Um, so that is the end of my presentation. I just want to say thank you very, very much for the time to speak to you all. Um, we're committed to supporting and raising MSMEs um, to play an even more meaningful role um, within their national economies and their local communities. We think digitization has a um, has a great role to play in that, and I'm very open to partnerships to help accelerate um, and drive that for the benefit of MSME owners. So thanks, Ihab. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Louise. Uh, thank you for the uh, for the for the visa uh, leadership and the visa partnership, continuous partnership um, with us. And thank you for the great uh, insights and information that you shared with us uh, today. And next we have, um, um, need to hear now uh, um, and learn about the MSME local perspective from one of our Postal Network members, Tanzania Post, and particularly on how 
the enabling regulatory provisions can support the postal operators in expanding their engagements with MSMEs, um, postal customers. Um, and this also helps them with the diversification of the products um, um, and solutions offering. So with that being said, uh, let me uh, hand the floor over to Mr. Kassassi. Um, Mr. Kassassi, the floor is yours. Hello, oh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening all who uh, are involved in this uh, webinar this evening. Uh, my name is Iyab, as just said, I'm Konstantin Kassassi from Tanzania Post, the Director of Electronic Business and Financial Services. And I'm acting as the POCC2 Chair on Financial Services on E-commerce Development and Physical Services. Uh, next slide, slide, you have uh, my slides uh, almost 11 and I'll just go quick uh, for the sake of time so that you can just get an insight of what uh, Tanzania Post have done in supporting the SMEs uh, through various regular and regulatory reform that has been done by, by the government. Next slide, you have. Wow. Uh, Tanzania Post Corporation was established in 1993 and became operational on 1st January 1994. And this uh, Post Corporation is under various international organizations such as UPU, PAPU, SAPOA, and IACO. And based on the act of establishment, uh, Tanzania Post Corporation was mandated with four functions, uh, which are to support postal services within and outside the United Republic of Tanzania meeting industry, commercial, social, and household needs, provision of financial services and remittances, and fourth, uh, provision of counter services for the corporation and for the government businesses. Next slide, please. Uh, coming to our business then, uh, in our country, in Tanzania, MSE, MSMEs uh, is a vital part of the economy that account one third of the country's GDP and providing employment for millions of people especially in rural and semi-urban areas. Uh, the sector comprises various, in, uh, various sectors in, from industries, including agriculture, trade, manufacturing, and various services which are provided in non-formal uh, sectors. So uh, MSMEs in our country has been an essential in reducing poverty, providing income, and enhance skills among workforce that are, are playing significant role in poverty reduction. Uh, for this year, uh, for the study that has been done by the Ministry of Trade, uh, SMEs in Tanzania has a direct impact and various programs have been initiated to support MSMEs so that to attain the goal of the third uh, five-year development plan, which targets on industrialization, uh, economic diversification, and uh, inclusive growth. As you can see on the picture of the light, uh, thank you, Ihab. Uh, I just I'm go sorry. straight to the. I'm sorry, my apologies. Yeah, the picture on the right shows uh, it's, it's, a, it's a national flag and show the figures that 95% uh, of all the businesses are uh, conducted by MSMEs and 35% of the Tanzania GDP is contributed from the activities which are done by MSMEs. Next slide, Ihab. Now, coming to the importance of SMEs in Tanzania, uh, there are more. There are four main things that has been contributed by the function which are done by SMEs, whereby one is economic growth, whereby 30 to 35% of the country GDP, GDP is contributed by the activities which are done by MSMEs uh, in the sectors which are played mostly in, in manufacturing, industry, and small trade. And second is job creation. Uh, as I've said, the majority of the Tanzania have been engaged in informal uh, businesses, whereby 75% of the employment uh, uh, of informal sectors are as MSMEs, which are geared to support business sector and reflect the broader trend observed in the emerging economies, uh, whereby people they do for enhancing their survival and means of living. Uh, another thing is poverty reduction. MSMEs play a greater role in poverty alleviation by providing income to families and individuals who are engaged in various uh, activities, which are mostly uh, low income individuals and communities. This has strengthened MSMEs as a direct way to reduce poverty. And with an estimate of 3 million MSMEs in Tanzania, they account for 27% uh, of the GDP 
and employ millions of particulars in Lulo and uh, some underserved areas. And third, MSMEs has been used as an innovation and innovation and competitiveness. This has helped uh, because some of the institutions have been established to facilitate MSMEs in doing their businesses that uh, uh, create some innovation and bring competitiveness in the prevailing business, which are conducted by uh, most of the people who are em employed in the informal sector. Next slide, Ihab, please. Now, uh, let me just speak about uh, the government initiatives uh, in regulatory framework in supporting MSMEs. They have four uh, items that the government has tried to support the growth of MSMEs, uh, starting with uh, simplifying business registration processes, whereby the government has established an online platform for registration, uh, whereby people can just use their mobile phones and some can go to the open internet cafes, uh, which are owned by government institutions, so that they can get a, a platform whereby they can register their, their businesses. Together with this, uh, the government has established one-stop service center, whereby all the services which uh, are required a person to, to, to get so that to, to register a business are found within a single room, whereby uh, some like business registration, business license, uh, tax identification number, they are all included in one platform or one roof, whereby a person can just get all the services within a single, a single, a single, a single point. Another thing that the government has done is reduce paperwork, whereby various trade and business systems have been linked to one international identity card. So all these things as they speak together, only an ID is required, a national ID is required for business registration when a person enters in one, one stop uh, service center. So uh, we have reduced a, a number of paperwork that were supposed to be done by a single person because of the interoperability of systems which require one to complete uh, registration of the business. And another thing is registration for MSMEs, registration fee for establishing a business has been reduced by 5% prior to the one which was uh, before 2002. And now a 5% uh, discount has been done for small and medium enterprises who are a new one and they want to register their businesses. Another big thing that has been done by the government in supporting MSMEs is reducing bureaucratic handles, uh, whereby they mostly encourage the use of PPP, a private and public partnership, and establishment of Tanzania Investment Center, which is there to support uh, the prevailing SMEs and the new SMEs who want to onboard in the SME sector, whereby they support them from uh, training and capacity building uh, things so that they can know how to go and which business is, is better to venture for improving and, and increasing their income. And then uh, public sector services and, corrupt, and corruption measures. This has been put in place to ensure that people that doesn't suffer a lot in securing uh, business licenses to implement their businesses. Uh, another thing that the government has done to support MSMEs is the streamlining tax processes, whereby uh, for small businesses with turnover between 4 million to 100 million, uh, they just get a, enjoy a tax of 3%, while others, they're enjoying a tax of 18%. And for MSMEs, uh, the government has lowered the corporate tax by 25% for a couple of three years, whereby a person can enjoy a discount of 25% of corporate tax uh, for SMEs, which are uh, registered for, 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 for the starting year. And then custom duty exemptions, most of the MSMEs which are dealing in manufacturing sector, they enjoy a customs duty exemption for importation of various uh, materials which they need to facilitate their, their operations in the business sector that they are, they are, they are running. And another thing on, on tax issues is a tax holiday and startup uh, incentives. This has been issued to all SMEs whereby they enjoy a tax holiday for a couple of 10 years whereby they, they just get a tax holiday for the business that they, they want to, to groom after uh, submitting their business plan and business case to Tanzania Investment Center. Uh, and they are enjoying this tax holiday uh, based on the act of Tanzania Investment Center 
for MSMEs who are, who are, who are uh, engaged in, in manufacturing sector. And third, uh, fourth, the country has been trying a lot to push and improve business in environment, whereby uh, some business infrastructures have been refurbished and others, uh, they are very new one. Uh, currently, uh, we are enjoying the SGR, which is the standard gauge rail. Uh, this is a speed uh, rail that has been built and it has been the first in East Africa to support movement of people and goods from one point to another. And uh, the, the country has bought a flight, it is Boeing 767 uh, with 54 tons to support MSMEs across the country uh, connected to other people, other, other places in the world. Uh, another thing, uh, the government has established the Tanzania Agriculture Development Bank. This is there to support all the MSMEs who fall under the agriculture sector. So the bank is there to support them and giving them some uh, small loan to support uh, their business growth uh, so that they can just not get into uh, challenges of financing their, their businesses. Market linkages has been created through a small industrial development uh, organization, which is there to take care of the SMEs nurseries and make them to make sure that they, they grow and become uh, big to support other sectors uh, of the country. And another thing in, uh, in the business environment, the government has created an e-commerce platform uh, through uh, the fund that has been created, uh, imagined from the loan of the World Bank, whereby currently the platform is under Tanzania Post Corporation, whereby we have onboarded uh, 1,300 uh, SMEs, they are selling their varieties within our platform, and we do deliver uh, uh, to, 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 to places where people buy this, this business. Uh, another slide, do you have, please? Uh, Tanzania Post Corporation as, as a, the key in a enabler for SMEs growth. Uh, it has taken four major issues to make sure that they support uh, MSMEs in their growth by running the e-commerce platform, which is called the uh, kitonga.post, which is an online platform or a marketplace whereby these vendors can just uh, display their product and uh, people can access them through the UPU uh, 192 member countries. Another thing is uh, Tanzania Post Corporation has entered an MOU with Tanzania uh, Trade Development, whereby it facilitates uh, various SMEs with training, capacity building, and market penetration. And this stand trade is an organization which is is, is nurturing uh, SMEs who are, who are coming in the market uh, with new innovation and new ideas. Another thing, as the designated operator, uh, Tanzania Post Corporation has been providing logistic and courier services to facilitate movement of goods or, and services for MSMEs, uh, whereby we are using the national addressing and postcode system to move things from one point to another to make sure that we deliver them at the doorstep. And another thing uh, that Tanzania Post Corporation has done is the establishment of mini fulfillment centers uh, for MSMEs, whereby MSMEs who have no places to store their a product they store in in fulfillment centers which are owned by Tanzania Post Corporation, and then uh, when they buy through the online platform, we start we immediately immediately pick and deliver these items uh, to people uh, uh, in a convenient time and in a convenient convenient way uh, through the UPU uh, standards. Another government initiative that has done and regulatory reform to support MSME is uh, reviewing and establishing the SMEs policy. Uh, this policy was established in 2002, which is it provides the comprehensive framework for promoting and supporting MSMEs. But uh, it has been reviewed currently uh, to make sure that it accommodates the digital nature of business, which is uh, currently the, the talk of the town, to make sure that uh, the, the, the business which is done by SMEs is as well as uh, moving together with the digital initiative which the country is doing. Uh, another thing is business registration and the licensing authority. This has been established by the government to make sure that uh, all bureaucratic procedures and complexity in registration business are handled in a single is the single agency, uh, and whereby this agency is doing support in capacity building and training and workshop to SMEs so that they can just uh, grow uh, in a number of time. Uh, another thing that has been established by the government is a small industrial development organization. Uh, this has been there to support uh, MSMEs in business training, consultants, and service support 
to improve SMEs. SMEs. Uh, for the last year, uh, 800 MSMEs were, were facilitated through this through this CEDO, uh, whereby they enjoyed uh, business training, consultant, and support to make sure that they grow and, and become uh, big businesses in, in near future. And fourth, the government has established an industry park whereby uh, this is, 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 a, is, a, is a, like a wall whereby uh, all the businesses are found and people can go there for getting some training and some can create access to markets and business infrastructures to facilitate uh, uh, movement of uh, facilitate availability of equipment which are required by MSMEs to run their operationals. And most of the people who have facilitated this is uh, uh, people from China. They've just built it and uh, under the government support to make sure that they create a conducive environment for MSMEs to access equipment and tools to run their businesses because most of MSMEs, they're engaged in small businesses like manufacturing and agriculture and things of the kind. Next slide, Ihab, please. Uh, there are other players who have been supporting the government initiative in uh, enhancing uh, SMEs in their daily activities, whereby we have Tanzania Startup Association Innovation Hub support. This is specifically for uh, ICT issues and innovation issues in business. Uh, together with that, we have Tanzania Agriculture Development Bank. This is there to support uh, MSMEs to secure loans and financial services. And for the since 2019, 2018, uh, more than 8,000 smallholders, farmers, were, 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 were uh, accessed, assessed various loans and financial services through this bank. And it, additional individuals, more than uh, 748377, were, were impacted by this uh, Tanzania Agriculture Development Bank. Another bank, this is just a community bank, is called uh, CRDB Bank. It has a special program which is called Imbeju whereby this is spread through 164 rural areas, 68 rural areas, whereby the post offices there can support these small loans uh, for, for, for groups uh, of people who are living in, in, in local governments uh, in underserved areas. We have a support as well as from Swiss Embass. It's called the Daraja Impact Fund. Uh, Daraja is a Swahili name, which means a bridge whereby it connects uh, various government initiatives with rural people to secure loans and various uh, 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 training and initiative to move and grow business uh, environment. Another thing uh, is Tanzania Bureau of Standard. This is a, is a government entity whereby it allocates uh, some funds uh, for, the, for, this, for, the, for the year 2024. It has allocated 25 250 million uh, Tanzanian shillings to support uh, various initiatives of MSMEs in East Africa and Sadiq region, uh, whereby uh, for the last for this year it has issued more than 1,051 1, licenses to small businesses to cut across East Africa and 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 Sadiq region for for business and uh, a trade flow. Another slide, please. Uh, generally, in Tanzania, MSME, SMEs uh, remain the backbone of the country economy. Uh, that constitutes to about 94% of the business and contributing to about 35% of the GDP and 40% of the workforce of all the 64 million people uh, in the country. So despite the challenges that are facing MSMEs, as they have displayed there, uh, Tanzania government and Tanzania Post have various initiatives that are, are on place to make sure that the MSMEs are supported to make sure that they they they, they grow from one point to another uh, from the challenges that they encounter, access to financial services, policy and regulatory framework, digitization of business, and low knowledge of business innovation. This has been treated by the government uh, through legal and regulatory framework, as I've said uh, on the previous slide. Establishment of window for financial institutions for SMEs in some banks which are owned by the government and other banks which are owned by uh, people from uh, by 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 joints between government and other agencies and conducting training and workshop through the CEDO uh, agencies and Stantrade 
uh, that have been uh, uh, established to support this initiative. And on the side of Tanzania Post Corporation, we have been enhancing MSMEs uh, by uh, enhancing uh, e-commerce initiatives and e-commerce business trade flow uh, for MSMEs to join our platform so that they can get access to market and the training through the contract that we have with uh, Tan Trade, which is Tanzania uh, Trade uh, Development Agency. Uh, currently, we are securing a license of being a financial integrator so that we can facilitate, facilitate and enhance financial integration and financial remittances and payment to MSMEs in the, in the government online platform, uh, which is will reduce some, uh, some cost in facilitating movement of cash from one point to another uh, by MSMEs. And lastly, uh, we are pushing and accelerating our courier and business and logistic business to make sure that we are fully utilizing the national addressing and postcode system to make sure that uh, all MSMEs, they are, uh, pro con they are accelerating their business in making sure that all the items they are delivered on those steps to make sure that we, 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 do, we comply with uh, the standard which have been made by the UPU in facilitating home delivery and last mile delivery initiatives, which are done uh, simultaneously in the UPU, in Papu, in Sapoa, and uh, in Tanzania as well. Uh, next slide, please. I think this is a con conclusion uh, a slide. I would like to appreciate uh, all the presenters for the good presentation that I've made. And I have gained a lot from uh, Dr. Jose, Sahara, and uh, Madam Luis for what they presented. And uh, we appreciate it as well Amarante and John Samuel, who has been a very good champion in accelerating post growth uh, in some countries in Africa, Asia, and the rest of, of the world. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I set the floor back to you, Mr. Iyam. Constantine, thank you very much for this um, uh, very interesting and rich uh, intervention from a local perspective. Uh, very interesting thoughts and ideas around tax holidays for MSMEs and, and a number of other great thoughts. So thank you very much for, for that. And thank you also to all uh, the presenters. Um, now let's turn into uh, a quick chat. And, uh, and, and if I can ask the our presenters, please, to turn their cameras on, um, just to try to unpack um, some of the uh, key messages from today's discussion. And um, let me start by going to um, Amarante Consulting. Um, so, so Sahana and, and John, based on your overall research observations, um, what would you say are the key elements that may be inhibiting the postal networks to effectively digitize MSMEs? Thank you, we have. Uh, maybe I will let John go first on this one. John? <clears throat> uh, you are on mute, John. Yes, yes. Um... I think based on our research, I would say that one is the um, investment in the capacity building is one area which um, um, inhibits the post office. And post office is generally, um, uh, it's not focusing upon, it's it's not um, dividing the customers into various categories. Um, and whereas here we need basically an account management. Um, if account management is not done dividing the um, individuals and then businesses into two types of categories, large businesses like banks, generally the post office are very good. In the, um, uh, whereas the MSME, there has always been a challenge. Take the example of India Post. Uh, we have almost 60 million MSMEs, very large number. And uh, reaching out to them and uh, getting that business into the post office, uh, it, it's one of the excellent opportunities, but the um, investment in capacity building and investment in the postal infrastructure. Those are, these are the two areas that I would say um, it has been a challenging thing. Uh, unless the account management is done, this is again an uh, area which post office need to really move ahead. I think these are uh, two areas instead of focusing upon a mass market approach, we need to go for a focused market, market approach so that uh, that's a huge business that we can really get in. And the one additional thing that I would always add is that, you know, the MSMEs uh, have a huge, at least in India and a few other countries which we have 
done the research. They've got a huge potential in terms of export. And for the export, there are mm, uh, uh, they, they really require help from the post office at various stages. Um, in terms of documentation, that's where the digital help is required. And um, uh, this capacity building as well as the postal infrastructure and the export orientation will also be helpful. I think these are the basic things I would say. Excellent, excellent. So Hannah, would you like to add uh, any additional comments? Maybe just to share insight when we were you know, doing the research and we started seeing a pattern where posts actually are telling us we don't segment our clientele. And to John's point, it's not only about the account managing for the MSMEs, but for any customer, the posts have a very mass market approach. Any walk-in customer comes in and you know uses a service and the feedback is we know our customers very well, we know our catchment areas very well, we know the local language, we know, you know each right. and every person because the post officer knows them. Yep. But in terms of a CRM, a customer relationship management tool or segmentation, really, we weren't able to, you know, get data on the women or the individuals or those that are coming for a certain service, et cetera. And having this tool and having this approach uh, across the different segments would be really um, key. And then it would help uh, this inhibition of actually knowing your customer. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So, 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 um, Thank you, thank you very much, John and Sahana, for that. Uh, let me turn to to Visa and um, and Luis. The, the 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 point of the question is, you know, how important is the economic and business case models as part of building the postal MSME expansion plans, so that we can actually come to a point where we can achieve scalability? Yeah. Um... I mean, the economics and the business case are fundamental. Um... Because, you know, what we are, a successful program is a sustainable, commercially viable program. Um, and to deliver a sustainable, commercially viable program, um, there will be cost buckets. Um, there will be output, but there will be cost buckets. So meticulously understanding the cost buckets and um, the stakeholders and partners involved um, in any digital financial service provided through post offices um, is is a really important preparatory you know pre um, you know pre MVP pre pilot certainly pre scale piece of work to do um, to make sure that the program has the the you know the longest chance of success um, you know and when I say commercially viable I mean a program that does not require um, additional funding and grants to be able to um, continue and cover its capex and its opex. Um, so the so the so the commercials are really important, and and to do that earlier on, um, you know, in the exploratory um, and design phase um, of any program, um, is fundamental. Having that signed off by all the stakeholders involved. Um, because, you know, what you're ideally looking for is an ecosystem approach. Um, it's not just the, um, you know, the costs and the um, and the revenue to be expected right. from the, you know, delivery of the actual kind of solution itself. But you've got to look at the component parts within the broader ecosystem um, and and bring them into, you know, the cost modeling. So it's really important. I think just my, 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 my kind of lasting point is um, to do it in advance. Um, as part of the um, design phase um, is the right place to do it. Got it, got it, no, absolutely. Um, uh, Constantine, t t Tanzania Post has, has illustrated really a very good example of, um, I mean, you've, 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 you've explained to us basically how the um, collective um, responsibility point that Louise had mentioned is really coming to fruition in Tanzania based on the collaboration with, with different partners. So from your experience, how important is it for the postal networks to actually play a role, to be proactive in linking their focus on expanding the MSME digitization along with the national financial inclusion priorities? So, so the role of the post, what can the post do to make sure that this uh, activity happens? How can they accelerate it? What, what can they do? 
Uh, thank you, Ihab. Uh, uh, thank you for, 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 for that very brilliant question. Uh, on, on our side, as I've said in how my slides were speaking, we have seen that uh, more than 30% of the business in, in our country is contributed by the MSMEs. So we can't be outside MSMEs initiatives or we can't be part of the part and parcel of the SME, MSMEs because they are the ones who are driving businesses even to the larger businesses. Because some of the uh, products which are, uh, are produced by MSMEs, they are feeding big industries uh, which are uh, within the country. So the role of the post, speaking on my side and, uh, the, uh, and the side of, of Africa maybe, because most of the people, they are engaged in informal business sector. So we can't leave this, this big uh, mass of people who are, who are doing this business, which is not that much formal, uh, because they are the one who are driving uh, uh, businesses to large businesses, and they can just push volumes for the core function of the post that we are currently doing, despite the decline of males, but we can engage ourselves in uh, doing some logistic and courier businesses to some uh, SMSMEs products which are, are produced. Uh, together with the agenda of financial inclusion, they are the one who are, are, are running uh, small tra transactions. So taking them on board can just uh, accelerate the growth and sustainability of the post through accessing, giving them access to uh, small uh, um, uh, cost of making their transactions to secure their raw materials and conducting their businesses. So right. we, 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 we decided to join a government initiative by having a, a MOU with uh, Tanzania a Small Trade Association and the Small Industry Development Organization so that we can capture this big market, uh, which, which is contributing to about 40% of the GDP. And as we are moving to the big e-commerce platform, which is hosted by Tanzania Post Corporation, we started with products which are produced by these MSMEs. So taking them on board in our core business, that is Korea, our next uh, core business, which is financial services, and e-commerce, which is the big and giant coming business now, is a thing that can just make the post network sustainable by fac facilitating and enhancing function and activities which are done by MSMEs. So from this side, that is what I can speak. Uh, Mr. Hayab, uh, back to you. Very good. No, thank you. Thank you very, very much for that. So it's all about really the preparation, the being the proactiveness, the planning to to be engaged and and to be in, involved. And I, I guess you know the measuring the success and and you know brings us to the question: How do we quantify and qualify? I guess the question is to Jose. Um, Jose, are you with us? I do not see your camera on. Yes, I'm with you. Oh, okay. And okay. There is okay. a camera on. Okay, great. Thank you for that. So so so. In terms of the qualification and the quantification, how can we better measure and track the impacts of postal MSME digitizations uh, for the postal segments that are in focus? Uh, how, how, how do we get better? What are some of the tools? You talked a lot in the beginning about the importance of tracking and qualifying the evaluating the regulatory framework. How can we be more successful in that? So here we have several tools at UPU to measure the impact. And one of them is the integrated index for postal development. And uh, I want to congratulate uh, Tanzania because they've joined the top three uh, best postal services in Africa. Okay. Uh, they are now in the top three in Africa. Uh, and uh, it's not by chance. What they are doing here with uh, MSME's integration and this very comprehensive approach, ecosystemic approach, combining payments, e-commerce, logistics, uh, marketplace, uh, uh, market intelligence, uh, and international uh, facilitation uh, for, for MSMEs uh, uh, probably leads to their uh, postal development performance. Uh, um, so congratulations to, 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 to them. We've been analyzing through our big data. Here we're analyzing billions of data points and benchmarking all postal services in the world. And we are very glad to notice that Tanzania has, uh, has really improved uh, its uh, postal development score and postal development a, a lot recently. And this is not by chance. 
So we also think that uh, that uh, personally speaking, as an economist, uh, I don't want to be contradictory with your wonderful consultant uh, uh, company, uh, Sahana, but I really believe uh, in Model 3. I really believe in Model 3 because it's what actually Tanzania is doing, Model 3 to combine into creating a combination of services and offering them together to, to MSMEs. This is a way... Uh, you can you can talk to also to, to big e-commerce platforms to the Amazons of these worlds and and, and 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 others if you know how to create this combined offer of of uh, of services. So I really believe in this model three. And for this model three, one one of the strengths of the the postal networks uh, uh, through the tracking systems, through the custom declaration systems. Uh, and if we combine this data with uh, with uh, with uh, with also uh, uh, payment data from partners uh, in the in the in the credit card sphere, we could achieve unparalleled unpar level of market intelligence for MSMEs. So if we combine the right data together, and because also the post has always been respecting uh, people's data and ensuring this is data, the very story of post is about respecting privacy, respecting data, the people's data. From, from, from the very inception of postal services, from letter in the 19th century, it's about respecting the secrecy. It's about uh, 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 ensuring this, this data privacy. So I think postal networks are, are really well positioned to, to contribute to this, uh, to this uh, trusted market intelligence that can help MSMEs uh, reach uh, many more customers uh, uh, all over the world, not only in their countries, and uh, and by safely sharing data with with the partners without jeopardizing uh, any sensitive uh, sensitive data. For this, we need to create, of course, in each country the regulatory framework that facilitates it. But I'm very optimistic when I see examples like such uh, the one from Tanzania Post, which is absolutely amazing. I think we should study their case uh, much more in depth. Uh, and if we are able to move most of the postal companies to Model 3, I think this is where we can make a big difference, a very, very big difference in terms of contribution of postal networks to MSME success all over the world. Excellent. And particularly if we want to integrate them, and this is the UPU's role, integrate them in the, in the, in the international trading system. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, thank you, Jose, for that. I, I think we've got time for one or maybe two more questions. One, one, one point that I wanted to point to Visa. Um, it's around the value proposition, and and really, how how can a postal MSME product value proposition become relevant and compelling to enable active, uh, you know, solution usage and take up uh, by the MSME communities, um, Luis? Yeah. Thanks, Ihab. Um, you know, actually, a, a lot of my answer is going to do with is, is going to complement what Jose just talked about. You know, kind of data. Um, yep. But um, but I mean, fundamentally, the principle um, is, is user centered design. I mean, I think a few of the speakers have talked about it today. But um, MSME, uh, well, MSMEs are not um, heterogeneous. They they are um, a mix of different um, businesses, geographies. Uh, digital financial maturity. So it's really fundamental that we design with the user in mind. Um, so what I find is always really helpful is, um, you know, you start off, you, you run through a user-centered design process. Um, you know, working with the post office very clearly to understand um, the stage um, and the, 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 I suppose, the digital capacity um, and um, ambition and goals of that individual post office. Um, they need to understand what is the segment focus. Um, you know, the, the, the MSMEs, are, are we talking about smallholder farmers? Are we talking about um, uh, hospitality in, or, or trade? You know, what type of retailers, what type of, um, you know, small business group um, is, is on the priority list um, to serve? Um, and then, you know, using research, um, you know, a, a direct um, a qualitative kind of research with that group, um, understand, you know, what their needs are, um, what the barriers are, um, the affordability kind of points, um, and design to address those barriers um, to unlock the opportunities for that group. Um, and part of the design principles 
um, you know, you need to consider inclusivity, affordability, um, uh, but also, you know, co common across any kind of product design, simplicity. Um, right. Simplicity, um, yep. which enables user access, um, you know, user understanding and informed kind of use. Um, and then you run it through. It doesn't stop there. Um, it doesn't stop there when you've, you've gone through that research and, um, and you understand more deeply, you know, your goals, um, your segment goals, the capacity of the organization. Um, then you run through a staging process of, you know, kind of blueprint um, friends and family testing at the same time, as I mentioned before, deep rooted business case development um, to look at affordability, cost buckets, business case, investment requirements um, with an ecosystem kind of approach. Um, and then you put it through, you know, to prototype, you go back to that same group, um, uh, the research group, check that the prototype is um, is is it appealing for them um, and addresses some of the challenges and questions that they asked at the beginning of the process. Um, and then you run it through friends and family testing, MVP, pilot scale. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So this is great. This is great. And, and, and I, I think, I think we, we will probably have to, to, to stop here. The, 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 the panel discussion in respect of time to allow for questions, but some of the key messages that I just wanted to frame and some of the key, wordings that were said is, is around the tailored solutions, around the human touch that really comes along as part and parcel of the engagement through the post to support the, um, the postal customers in, 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 in being onboard in these solutions. The interoperability, the, the collective responsibility, this is something that is coming out very clear in many of the messages and the, the mentoring, the training, the encouraging informed usage so so really some of the key messages that i that i took from today is that postal networks has uh, have a, a very important role to play as part of this enabling ecosystem for msmes but they require to be proactive uh, as part of that ecosystem and they need to actually play an important role by linking themselves into the national financial inclusion goals um the the strong understanding by postal networks on the digital payment needs and requirements of the MSME customers is going to be vital to enable them to deliver, you know, solutions that are designed for these customer segments. Um, the enabling of innovation is a product of partnerships. And along with partnership comes the knowledge transfer, the cost savings, the better products and solutions to allow the post to actually expand, retain uh, their customers. Um, the executive sponsorships at, at a postal level is really very important. Um, and that is what allows the proactiveness and the whole team to actually uh, harm singing from the same sheet. Uh, and finally, the enabling regulation as, as illustrated in the Tanzania um, post example is, is, is really very crucial to propel um, the advancements of MSMEs um, in the future. So, so, so I want to thank the panel um, uh, guests. Thank you very, very much for your contributions and thank you for your presentations. And um, in the few uh, minutes that are left, I would like to open up uh, the floor for questions um, that uh, may be uh, available from anyone. So, um, um, Mr. Tobashad, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ihab, first of all, uh, I'd like to extend my thanks to all of the uh, panelists for uh, your insightful presentations and many thanks to UPU and uh, and you, Ihab, uh, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, my question is addressed to Visa. Uh, and the question is, what role does Visa see itself playing in enhancing digital payment infrastructure for MSMEs, particularly in underbanked areas or uh, rural areas? Uh, thanks so much. And um, that's such a brilliant question. Thank you for asking it. Um, really appreciate that. So, um, I mean, really quickly, um, Visa is a network um, and we are a network of two things. Um, we're a technology network. Um, which um, enables kind of connectivity um, and data and payment flow, but we're also a partner network. Um, so we have, um, you know, over 30,000 um, organizations that um, work with us um, across various geographies 
um, many times into um, rural, peri-urban um, environments um, to um, build out, extend and scale um, uh, payment infrastructure. Um, and that takes many forms and, and means. Um, we, we, we work with partners who... Uh, create um, and maintain digital wallets, digital credentials. We work with QR codes. We work with offline partners. We work with online partners. Um, we work with the last mile um, organizations. Um, our goal is to uplift everyone everywhere. Um, and that takes partnership in, in many forms and means. Um, so both with formal, formal financial institutions, fintechs, atechs, um, uh, development finance organizations, um, our role is to extend that network um, and to support um, MSME um, owners to enable to join um, the digital economy and, and unlock the benefits from the digital economy. Um, so I hope that kind of explains um, certainly kind of our, our purpose um, and our role um, and enabling network of partner and technology and solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Louise. Uh, there is another question uh, from uh, EPAP, uh, Mr. Abdullahi. Uh, the floor is yours. Merci, merci beaucoup. Merci à thank you very much. Thank you very much to the UPU for having organized this uh, exchange, this session. And thank you as well to all the speakers, Visa, Amarante, KPC, and to the UPU economists as well. I would like to ask a couple of questions. The question that was asked during the first roundtable on the fees that could be uh, limiting the possibility of uh, post uh, operators. I think the answers that were given could uh, have a lot to do with the infrastructure. Would you say that this is uh, something that you, on, on the basis of the study or beyond the study, could there also be a question of legislation? Because Miss Mays, when we offer services, they often also need um, financing. And it's important, for example, if tomorrow I need financing for something, for setting up some service, would you be able to accompany me to maybe walk uh, that line, or maybe would legislation or other um, issues maybe put a break to uh, that possible uh, company? It, it might be to do as well with the fact that post offices, post operators have to be limited by the legislation, and could this be linked to this lack of services? And this is a first question. And secondly, to do with the models, the three models that we uh, were seen by Amarante. These models that have been identified, are they compatible independently of where they are based? Or are they ge ge geographically set, whether it be model one, model two or model three? Uh, it would be interesting for us to know if they take the concerns of African postal operators. Out of the three models that were proposed, uh, proposed I saw that none were uh, for African countries, apart from Tanzania, of course, who has done a presentation of the efforts they've carried out. But we have noticed that there are no other African countries within from within the study. And therefore, are there any other African countries that could maybe be used uh, within these models to have a better insight into it? Thank you. I think I may need you to rephrase the first question, but maybe we can tackle the second question first, and then uh, we can come back to the first uh, question. So the compatibility of the models from Sahana's um, 
um, um, uh, research? Uh, are they applicable to to all the geographies, and are they applicable to? I mean, can they be used as a benchmark? Um, of course, there are differentiation in every region. I, I would let Sahana comment on that uh, first, and, and John, and then uh, and then we can actually add uh, a bit to it. So we'll come to the first question. So so Sahana and John. Thank you, Ihab. Um, may I speak in French? If yes, go ahead, please. Okay, great. Um, merci beaucoup, Abdul Dae, pour, uh, pour Thank you very question. much, Abdul uh, Dae, um, for your question. Indeed, the question uh, among the, the three models, in which model do I fit as a uh, post office? And I would say that the priority would be to really examine your context, the context of your market and uh, the context of your post in order to be able to create or analyze the uh, innovation uh, projects that you have already launched, the different uh, partnerships that you have created within your own context, but as well taking into account the context of your own country. Well, what is the digital maturity of your country and what are the objectives set by the country and the type of partnership that you could set up? It's important to know well, with what type of uh, bricks you can start building that structure. And rather than uh, seeing for which country we can offer which model, that could be, but I would say that the model really depends on your own strategy and on your own context, as well as what means you have available, whether it be digitally or legis legislatively speaking, how possible it is to uh, set up partnerships, like, for example, the Tanzanian Post, in order to share. And there, we, as from on that basis, we can decide what model to be choosing. And I very much agree with uh, Dr. Jose that Model 3 is the most mature, the most beneficial, because uh, posts as facilitators of MISMI payments and delivery services allows to join uh, forces with the needs of the MISMIs. But the choice is really to be made by you and by uh, the options you have available with, from within your country. Thank you. I hope this makes sense. The first question, would, would you want to, to actually make comments? Maybe, uh, Abdullah, if you can just re restate your question again, if you don't mind, in a, in a shortened version, please. Voilà, en fait, euh, il pleut ici, je ne sais pas trop, la communication fait défaut. We si are bien, having a storm, and I can't hear you very, very well. My, my, my connection is breaking up, but I think you want me to ask the question again. And what I want to know is, uh, amongst the different uh, issues that you have mentioned, is legislation one of them? Jose, what, what, could, you, could, you, uh, could we get you your input on that? Sur la partie régulation, bien, bien, bien sûr, euh, il peut y avoir des, euh, des blocages réglementaires. C'est la première id identification du problème euh, qu'il faut réaliser. Euh, si on veut aller vers le modèle 3, évidemment, euh, ça a, a, a aussi raison. Ça dépend des circonstances des, du pays et de l'état euh, des, 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 des contraintes, par exemple, réglementaires. On ne peut pas directement aller au modèle 3, que j'aime tant. <rire> sans lever une série de contraintes réglementaires. Ça, c'est sûr. Donc, en fait, ce qui serait pas mal, ce qui serait intéressant dans, dans cette approche serait de voir quelles sont les contraintes réglementaires qui empêchent d'aller vers le modèle 3. Euh, parce que le modèle 3, c'est un modèle qui est vraiment, pour moi, gagnant, gagnant, gagnant pour toutes les parties. Gagnant pour le MSMI, parce qu'elles ont accès à une panoplie de services euh, incroyables pour leur développement. Gagnant pour les... Les, les entreprises postales, parce que c'est le futur des services postaux, c'est la combinaison de services. Le, le, le malheur dans, dans les services postaux, encore actuellement, euh, dans l'approche euh, de leur modèle d'affaires, c'est que les services sont, sont approchés de manière isolée, séparée. Et aujourd'hui, la transformation des, des entreprises postales qui ont vraiment du succès, ce sont les entreprises postales et réseaux postaux 
qui savent combiner leurs services à, à travers les, les, les différentes possibilités, les, les paiements, la logistique, les, les, euh, les, euh, les, les marketplaces. Donc, c'est cette combinaison de services qui est essentielle pour amener au succès. Mais cette combinaison de services ne peut être réalisée que si les barrières réglementaires ont été euh, enlevées. Euh, et là, ouais. il faut un effort d'explication, de, 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 un grand effort d'explication auprès des autorités de régulation concernées. Yeah. If I could just jump in on that point, because I think the, the dialogue is very important and the communication and the collaboration with the policymaker is really crucial because, um, of course, it depends on each country and, 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 and you know, the challenges are very different from one part of the world to the other. But, but the dialogue between, you know, the, the entities and driven by, by post with the regulators And bringing in, you know, the the global leaders, uh, the likes of Visa, to join the part of this conversation, highlights, you know, it, how things have been done in, in other parts of the world. So, so there is, and it's it's a moving dialogue and it's a moving learning process that uh, that can help um, enhance the the the. Um, the domestic challenges uh, around regulations. Um, but thank you. Thank you very much for that question. We have a couple more minutes for one or two more questions. Any additional questions? So, so, so maybe I can just uh, raise, raise, a, raise a point to, um, to Visa. Um, so, so Luis, you, you talked about the, 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 um, the mentoring, the training, encouraging informed usage, which is actually very interesting. Um, how does Visa do that and, you know, from a partnership perspective? So is that something that you do with all partners or is it part of the assessment on the needs um, of the customer? Um, uh, yeah, thanks for the question, Ihab. There's a couple, there's a, there's a few different ways that we do it, basically. Um, so um, we are lucky enough to have a, a Visa Foundation Um, who will work um, through partner enabling groups to, um, you know, reach out and work with, in particular, female-led um, MSMEs um, with a particular focus about how they can support um, business growth, um, resilience, um, and, and that might or might not include the adoption of digital payments um, because it's a non-commercial, you know, kind of part of the broader visa family. Um, but it's about build, building more resilient Um, kind of you know section of the of the economy um, in terms of direct support to um, em enabling partners and to particular individual post offices um, again it it's uh, I and mean, we talked before about um, making sure that the engagement with each individual post office is right for that context for the capacity um, for the individual post office goals their segment focus Um, so a whole load of, you know, kind of different packages need to need to be taken into place. Um, and if there is a, um, you know, capacity building um, and mentoring of either um, um, individual um, uh, small business owners or post office staff as well, because um, they're a key component in, um, you know, the distribution and delivery, um, then either that's something that we can, um, you know, within the terms of a long term partnership, put within and put some funding towards um, to a local partner through a local partner. Um, but we also have um, a social impact team within Visa um, who for years have been Um, uh, particularly focused on financial inclusion and financial literacy support. Um, now, some of the most scale ways of, of achieving that is distributing that through partner groups. Um, so work, working with another enabling organizations to be able to, you know, kind of reach out and, um, and engage with um, both post office staff, um, uh, enabling um, distributor model staff and um, individual business owners. Um, and whether that is in person, whether it's mobile, whether it's digital, um, whatever is the right access point. Um, for that group in that right country, okay. um, then then we do that. So th that was a, a sort of a bit of a longer kind of answer, um, but we make sure that we do it in the right way with the right sustainable support um, through the right enabling partners. Excellent, excellent. So Hannah um, uh, and John, any closing comments that you would like to share uh, with our um, audience today? Thank you, we have. John, would you like to go first? 
We, we, we cannot hear you, John. Sorry. Can you hear me? Now? Yes, we can. No, we can. Right, right. After hearing uh, the presentation from um, Visa, I feel that uh, what we require is a huge partnership in terms of this um, um, infrastructure that we require for the MSME model. That will that that's one of the things I, I feel that if we can do that, that will help a lot. Otherwise. Um, you know, countries um, where, with whom I had been associated with either with Tanzania or with the India Post or many other countries in Ethiopia and many other countries, I always feel that there is there is a gap in this. You know, they, they want to really get into the MSME model, but um, there, there has not been many people to support the digital transformation. Right. The second, I would say that um, uh, Ethiopia has really done well. I'm glad. I mean, I was associated with their transformation and then uh, they, they have been doing very well. This model is doable. Um, uh, what, what they have done is the model three, which we have suggested, mm -hmm. and that doable, it is profitable. And uh, it, it helps both for the social impact as well as the economic impact. That's what I would say. Interesting. Thank you. So, Hannah, any, any quick words because we're running out of time? Yes, thank you, Ihab, for that. And I think I just want to, you know, circle back on the digitization thematic and the logistic thematic and the regulatory thematic. I mean, to Jose's point, the the, the most beautiful model will be the third one, right? Um, to Abdullah's point, but what about the regulatory barriers? And I want to take a minute just to, you know, fel fel felicitate also Tanzania Post. What they showed us is actually understanding the pain points of an MSME outside of the payments, and it touches on a lot of regulation, you know, the tax uh, holidays and the encouragement and the fostering a little bit more of the activities, you know, making that loop. And and to what Louise, you, you pointed out, it, it's not really one stakeholder who can bring all of that home. So you would need a digitization, you would need some regulatory help, and you would need to connect the dots between all of these players to be able to make it work, right? And so to John's point, I mean, it, it really needs a, co you know, co cohesive and a different tie party or four party or five party yeah. you know a car partnership to actually make this work <laughs> thank you very much thanks jose <laughs> um we don't hear you anymore you have i think you, you have your new age i'm sorry so constantine i'm sorry so uh, any any final comments uh, constantine on um um, uh, on, on, uh, from your side. Uh, I would just like to appreciate the, all the presenters for the presentation that have been made. But I think uh, the more that have been dis uh, explained by Sahala from Amarante, it's good to be explained more to some other countries so that they can just get on board on how to, to include the MSMEs uh, to boost the business of the postal sector. Thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. Jose, uh, to, to close with you, uh, what would be one of or one or two messages that you would want to leave everybody with? I would say that uh, what we call hyper-collaboration at UPU is more needed than ever. Hyper-collaboration is a multiple dimension partnership that uh, Sahana was suggesting in our last intervention. And then uh, data, data to design, data to to monitor and to measure the impact of all these partnerships and initiatives. And I think we have potentially everything uh, from the postal side here. Fantastic. Then we most welcome uh, the relevant partners like Visa to, to act together with us. Fantastic. Fascinating conversation from everybody. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time. Thank you for the audience, for listening to the uh, webinar today and uh, the research is available online. Uh, one more time, thank you for every, very much for everybody that participated today and for the presenters and wishing you have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you.